All right. I'm here at the get together. Haven't done a lot of film. Done a lot of John. Not a lot of talk. Not a lot of filming. And a lot of food because it was excellent food. But I got to make some space on the tailgate because we're going to talk about some bars and chains. At least someone is. Not me. So this stuff goes down. All right, shoot. Shoot? No pun intended. Huh? So what do you want to know? Um, what I want to know is what's unique about the bar and the chain and why a person should buy them. Feature, function, benefit. Feature, function, and benefit. Well, so the feature, function, and benefit of this system is that it's a narrow curve system. So it's it takes out less material than a conventional chain. So with that said, you can actually run longer length bars with this chain with a smaller CC or displacement. So you're basically loading the tooth less. You have less load per cut. Correct. Per cutter, excuse me. Right. So if a guy wants longer is better, right? Yeah. Well, Everybody, there's Everybody some people debate that. Right. But. <laughs> We edit here too, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then you end up with a, uh, you know, a small powerhead, you know, and, and somebody wants a 20-inch bar on that, you know, say a 45cc powerhead. So let me let me paraphrase a little okay. bit. So what I'm getting out of this, you see, it's, it's called like reading between the lines. Right. It takes less power to pull that chain than a comparable chain in three eighths. Absolutely. Okay. Now because of that, um, if you're looking for the longer bar, the length. Correct. Because it takes less power to pull that chain, Correct. you can use that bar and chain combo and get a few more inches and not load your power head so much. Exactly. And the other thing too is, is the way we've designed this chain, we're actually using a, a different type of grinding, this instead of a conventional stone. Um, over the years, we've used a traditional bench top grinder, if you will, but it's an industrial big grinder to sharpen all of our chain teeth. And this is actually using a uh, CBN type uh, technology that uh, people call them diamond wheels. They're not really diamond wheels, but you can, you know, uh, they keep their shape. Have you ever seen one? They're so you get more consistency over the manufacturing. Correct. And the other thing is, is that these grinders that we use to do these cutters now can actually sweep through the gullet and then sweep up to the bottom of the top plate on the cutter. So you actually have another axis of rotation in there exactly. somewhere. Exactly. So now you have more control of the shape. Correct. Our traditional, or if you look at a cutter traditionally, it will have a fairly large hook angle in it. Yes. And if you look at the side plate angle on this, it's got some more vertical in it. Okay. But the net, net, net is uh, per length of chain, it takes less power to turn that. Correct. And for the performance guy, that means if you go up a tooth in the sprocket, you can get more speed. And for the guy trying to get larger wood, he can put a longer bar. But the, the, uh, the core reason you can do that is the same. It just takes less power. Right, and this is a semi-chisel cutter, so it's actually using all of this radius on the cutter to cut. Yeah. As opposed to a full chisel cutter that only uses the point. Okay, so where's better? So you can use this in dirty wood or touch it in the ground every once in a while because nobody's perfect. It does look different. Now how about sharpening? Is it harder to sharpen? It actually is not. We actually, we recommend you either obviously use a benchtop grinder or a, uh, or a round file to do it. Um, you won't obviously be able to sweep the gullet like we do with the machines at, at the factory in Portland. Right. But we've only found that you, uh, it's a minimal amount of performance loss. So what you're saying is, even though it's got a very uh, tightly defined geometry, and you can keep it that way at the factory. The fact is the basic design is flexible enough where if it's not perfect, it still cuts well. Yes, absolutely. And some of the other features that we built into it too are these channels on the, on the drivers now where they'll help pick up oil and, so the lubrication. and route that up to the bearings. Well, that's really cool. And then we also designed... Oh, I can see that. You can see the little lines. Right. And then we also designed that kind of dog bone looking section in the middle of that tie strap. Yeah. And so if you notice how it, it goes over the edges of the rivet, it's designed to, to help bring the oil up and go around the, around the rivet and hold the oil there. Which does a lot of things, not just reduce the effort because it's well lubricated. Hey, right. Nice to meet you too. Thanks, but but also uh, Absolutely. Likewise. Yeah, extend the life good. of the bar. Tell me about these bars. So the bar is actually 
our our latest laminate bar that we've come out with. And so laminate bars have three pieces for construction. They have the two outside laminates and then a center core. And traditionally everyone takes a, two steel pieces and a steel center and spot welds them together. With this, we actually have an aluminum core in here. For lightweight. And then two um, steel uh, laminates on the outside. So you're using, a, you're using a glue. Right, so we use the aerospace glue. Screwed glue. Yes. <clears throat> and glue that together. So the neat thing about it though is, is that it has the same properties then of a solid bar versus a laminate bar that's spot welded. Because the spot welds are only in so many spots. This is the entire length of the bar. And which brings up a question is, is uh, over, it's been tested over the range of temperatures because you have a bimetallic there, you have aluminum and steel right. that expand and contract at different right. rates. And this thing's been in testing two years-ish before we actually put it out on the market. One of the other things that you'll notice too if you ever pay attention to any of our bars is that we normally have a grease hole right yes. here so that you can grease the nose. Well, so we did some research with the leading bearing manufacturer and when we went back to uh, build these new bars, everybody knows that on a laminate bar or anything you rivet together, no matter what you do, they're going to walk around under load. And when that happens, debris gets in there, and the more debris you get in the nose, obviously, um, then it's going to make it fail. So what we've done here is, it's actually a sealed bearing. It's got uh, steel shims in there to seal up the bearings. Then the laminates go over the top of that. So even if the even if the laminates start to walk, the bearing still sealed. The bearing still sealed. So we grease. So we'll grease these from the factory, seal them up, put the whole thing together. Yeah. And then because you're not getting the debris in there, so the grease is not getting pushed out either. And you're not getting sand and grit and all silicon kind of and all sand. that abrasive stuff in there. Exactly. You end up with an abrasive slurry. Right. So out of curiosity, can you tell me what the prices are on those so retail? These are so these are actually running changes in our current bar lineup. So there's no price difference in our old laminate bar versus this new technology. And there's no price difference in our old chain versus this new chain because it's just a continual running change. So there's no, no change in the pricing. Well, that's good to know. But there's a change in the weight. There's a change in the sprocket. There's, there, there's certainly a lot of improvements to it that you know, make it a better bar than what we were previously. Now, do you have it uh, available in all the different bar mount sizes? In the uh, in the speed cut, which is the NeuroCurve system, we'll have it in 041, which is going to be Husqvarna's saws, so Poland, Husqvarna, Johnson Red, all that, uh, 095. And then we'll have it in 074 and 025. Those are bar mounts. Yes, sir. So okay. 074 and 025 would be steel. Right. 095, 041 would be Husqvarna. Okay. In the narrow curve. Now, this bar here, same type of construction, but we can go all the way out to 24 inches, which is what that is. And we have various gauges in that, so we can do 50, 58, 63. Using the conventional chains. Right. So that's got our, this is our current LGX, 72 LGX model on it, which is our full chisel cutter. So this is actually a whole new system. I mean, not just a chain and bar, it's really yes. a, a complete system. The, speed cut, yeah. the speed cut system is all brand new from the chain to the bar. The VersaCut bar is new with our existing. See, I think that's a subtle uh, point that really has to get articulated well. Otherwise, you're going to see people trying to throw steel chains on. Well, but now here's the here's the nice part, though. You can you can use the bar and you can put standard chain on it. Right. So when you put steel standard chain, our steel our standard chain, it'll fit on here. Take one of the narrow curve chains though, and stick it on a traditional bar, and you'll get about halfway through a cut. So that's you can use other chain on it. You can use our our 20 BPX. Or you can use our uh, 20 LPX on this and it won't, no big deal. But for the price difference of just getting the system with the right components, why would you do that? Say you're in a pinch and you run down to your local Ace Hardware and you pick up uh, some uh, 20 BPX because they've got it in the consumer packaging. So 
you're a John's Red guy. Yes. All right, so this now has a nine pin sprocket on it. We actually had to add a link to this. This normally takes a 78. We changed it over to 79. Because of the nine pin. Yeah, because it was long. And, well, we can go get it on film. There's plenty of lumber back there. Okay, I'll follow yeah. you right out there. This is our symbol for what the narrow, cur narrow curve systems look like. So whenever you see that, if you ever see a pole printer bar, you know, they'll use a 43 gauge chain system. And that little icon right there is the is our narrow curve. icon for narrow curve system. Well, that helps to keep track of stuff too. Right. And so when, we're hoping that people, when they see that more often, will go, hey, this has a, this is a special deal. Mm -hmm. Well, I gotta reiterate over and over again that that's, a, that's actually a hop up, if you think about it. Where if you can put something on a chainsaw and it cuts better now than it did before, that's considered a performance Im improvement. And that's something that anyone can do. I mean, right. I get into the whole simple tools thing, you know? Right. Some people like more complex tools. I like simple stuff. <laughs> you can't beat that with a stick. You bolt it on, it runs faster. Yeah, you're, you're screwed up because I, I couldn't get it to start. Yeah, hold your mouth right. It might be out of gas because they were running it before. No, it's, it's, got, it's got some fuel in it. Yeah, maybe it died. It could have blown up. If you, if you want to show me how to start it, uh, I'm happy to run it. Maybe Just I flooded the damn thing. It probably did because it does flood easy. They do flood easy. Yeah. Can you get that started for them? Yeah. It might be flooded, but I'd like to see that run. It, it didn't even fart really. So, so any yeah. any other question? Um, yeah, I didn't even get it to do that. It takes takes arm arm strength. <laughs> I, I didn't there was no pop at all. It's got flooded. I'll, I'll get it, I'll get it. Hold the throttle and yank on it. Yeah, it's real flooded. Is the choke still on? Yeah, it's bad. I'll get it around. It's bad. As long as I know it's flooded, I'll get it. Yeah, see, the choke is still on. I didn't choke it. <laughs> you gotta get full throttle. Yep. He'll yank on that and wear himself out. That's fine. I mean, if we made this into 24, that 60 cc saw wouldn't have any trouble at all with that. Not even a little bit. I get doesn't have any trouble with that 20. <laughs> well, I think that's a real interesting concept, personally. Yeah. I really do. And we're actually we're working on some other stuff that. Did it run? The, the dumb thing is all all these even lowly mod. I mean, it runs like a saw should. Yeah. I'm impressed. <laughs> it's a cheap piece of Chinese. It's a cheap piece of Chinese junk, and you know what? It runs great. Well, I appreciate that. <clears throat> I'm one of them running. Okay. Who wants to? I, I am no good as a trigger man. <laughs> How about you? You want to run it? Yeah, I'll run it. Get my, my chaff. Head out pretty quick. Okay. <laughs> to the um, compression release valve. Yeah. Because they were all junk steel. They broke all the time. They had built them back. There's, right, there's a flag in the decompression release. There's a little metal flag. It's, it looks like this hoopy thing. Yeah. And it needs to be hardened steel instead of the... Tool the, steel. Tool hard. steel, Not yeah. So, something that's tougher. And this is the awesome collection that the cutting edge usually has. winding down. That's Bob's new truck right there. A few diehards still hanging out. I learned a lot. It was a good day. I thought it was an interesting day. I really didn't get a chance uh, to do a whole lot of video. But I met Randy Evans and that was really cool. He's one of the premier characters in the chainsaw world. 
I think what, you, what, what ends up happening, you know, especially when you get to my age, is, is you realize that just a lot of good people out there. And time is short. And when you have the opportunity to go to a, an event like this and just get a chance to spend some time with these people, do it. Don't, don't come up with reasons not to make it happen. Because these are just good people.